Hey everyone, my name is Boys and Blade and I hope all of you are doing well today. So for today's video, this video is brought to you by pain and never-ending trauma because I am building another airship. I'm also building a Viking longhouse because Valhalla basically started in like Norse Viking inspiration. Then we went really heavily into fantasy. But now I want to kind of bring Valhalla back to its roots. So we are building a Viking longhouse and no, none of the buildings I built today have any use besides looking pretty. But uh, yeah, today's video is like half pain, suffering and the uh, near mental breakdown and then the latter half is happiness and a build that went surprisingly fast. But anyway, let's get started with the actual video and of course we're starting with pain because, well, here is the thing, I didn't record me building the actual ship part because I, it's basically the same thing as I did with the airships that I built for Canal Bashar. It's just smaller. The thing that's different is that this is more like a, maybe less of an airship but maybe like an air balloon or like it's a mixture of the two because there's a ship part but then it's held up instead of by sails it's held up by a air balloon which yeah, let's just say I found another public enemy of mine because I wanted it to have like, you know, you have the balloon and then I wanted the rope to like kind of crisscross across the balloon. But uh, yeah, that's not easy to do. Well, it is easy once you get to the ropes lying just right. But getting the ropes to lie just right is pain, suffering and never ending trauma. Because... Um, yeah, the grabbing point or basically where the how the fuck do you call that thing because I constantly forget what it's called but the, you know if you press X where the arrows and such show up it's not actually on the rope. It's just slightly off the rope so like if there's like the point the end of the rope it's like go like five centimeters above that so the grabbing point of the rope is not on the rope itself it's just floating above it which makes it a little bit annoying to make it work because uh, yeah that basically makes it that the rope moves in very weird ways when you're trying to make it fit into something and then once I figured that out like it's not perfect like the rope should be like completely on the balloon but in certain parts it's sort of hovering above it but by this point I was just like, yeah, nobody's going to really like to zoom in that close to a hot air balloon. Or at least I hope not. I think I'm now encouraging all of you guys to really look closely at my buildings because there's a lot of times where it's just like, looks good from afar, but once you get closer you will see everything that I've tried to hide. But yeah, so with this airship, because I'm still going to call it an airship even though it's more like an airship balloon but with this one I kind of well I went into world building again I mean with every build I do that basically but I this has somewhat set with me since I started building the brewery and like show, building basically this sort of modern interior of it because back then in like well Valhalla, Canal Bashar, the entire world is somewhat set in like a medieval renaissance era. But I wanted a modern brewery interior. And then some people were wondering like, why? Because it doesn't fit with like the time period. But then I thought, what time period? This is a fantasy world. They can have steam engines here, but then still be in a renaissance like setting. Because it's my world. I have floating cities. <laughs> so, I. This is basically what you can do with most fantasy worlds. You can go as crazy as you want. Of course, it's helpful if there's still some things that are recognizable because then you can sort of connect easier with the world. But yeah, if you want steam engines in a freaking prehistoric setting, you can do that. Of course, you need to explain why, <laughs> because. People are going to wonder why you have steam engines in a prehistoric setting, but uh, you can spin a story. <laughs> like, you can make a story to make everything basically work. So, 
when it came to these airships, well, I wanted to have it that like, oh, the technology originated in Kernabashar, because Kernabashar, it was necessary to develop airships to get to all the parts of the city. I kind of want to, in Kernabashar, make like an old part of the town that is actually on the ground and that is slowly settled into the floating air or into the floating islands almost want to say floating airships but yeah airships have basically traumatized me like building ships in planet zoo or just anywhere is just art because like how and also in planet zoo there's of course not like you need to figure out which pieces work and which don't and you really quickly figure out which definitely won't work but um yeah so that's like all right, so the technology originated in Kernobshar. So a airship in Valhalla, which is basically on the other side of the, do I want to say world or continent? I mean, Kernobshar and Azantium is almost its entire own continent. Basically on the other side of the world. Like you have Kernobshar on one edge of the world and Valhalla is on the other. So then it immediately struck me like, all right, if Valhalla has an airship, it's probably like a maybe run-of-the-mill thing that they found that they bought from uh, Kernabashar or from Xantium and it's probably going to be a very highly prized possession of Valhalla or well basically this is the company that's you know has the ice quarry and such so it's going to be a prized possession but it's not going to look the best but they might have improved it with technology from the brewery so it's like you can spin a story any sort of way. I can also say that Kernabashar already has the engines and such. Which I think they do because I'm going with the more Victorian but also like French boulevard style for Kernabashar. Which is like I think 18, 1900. So yeah. Again, it's my fancy world so I can do whatever the frick I like as long as I can somewhat explain it. Some things you don't have to explain, like nobody in this world knows why the islands of Kernabashar and the entire Caritas Desert, that there are like pockets of floating islands that nobody knows why. Of course, there are like multiple scholars and multiple like academical theories. I don't think that's the right word, but when have you ever heard proper English grammar and language on this channel? Never, but... There are multiple like theories about it and then of course every religion says it's because of this or that or those gods or that god or that goddess or like you don't have to explain everything but it's actually fun if there is something that's not explained to have like multiple clashing theories about it because then you just drive home that like nobody knows. <laughs> and that's fun. I like conflict. I mean no actually it's not like when it comes to fancy world building, I don't like the actual conflict. I like the tension leading up into conflict. Like wars are boring, but the prelude to war with like all the tension between nations, that's fun because everybody's on edge. Everybody is like, you know, kind of like, nah, nah. and uh, yeah, during the war, it's kind of like, yeah, there's battles, there's famine probably because farms are getting burned down and such. Yeah, the tension before the war is fun. Which is I think why I really like those scenes in Game of Thrones where it's like it's not the actual fighting bits. Like I half fell asleep in what's it called? The Battle of the Bastards, I think. Like I was kind of like, yeah. Nah. But I liked like the things leading up to the battles. Because you could feel that like people were like working towards that and there was the tension and all of that, so yeah. Anyway, enough with that. Let's start talking about a Viking longhouse that went surprisingly fast. Because I don't know why this actually went surprisingly fast. Like I thought this would take an entire stream just building this house. But within 30 minutes I was done. <laughs> and someone actually commented like, Oh, you built surprisingly fast. 
and then I was like, I have also no idea why it's going this fast this time because building any sort of like, well, I know how to build a Viking longhouse, like long and there are certain elements that I need to get in to make it a Viking longhouse or Norse longhouse. But here I wanted the roof to kind of slope like it does in the majority, I think, of longhouses. Which is usually not the easiest thing to do. So I thought, oh, this is going to be difficult. This is going to be a pain in the ass. But this is where I think squirrel mode comes in. Because I just lost all track of time and such. And was just like, I need to build. I need to build. And then I... I have no idea what happened, it just, it came together in 30 minutes and nah, <laughs> that's all I can say about it. I really want to somewhat go back to like the roots of Valhalla by having like more Viking and Norse inspired buildings again because that was the original plan with Valhalla. But of course I'm not going to shy away from fantasy buildings in Valhalla because again it's my fan it's my fantasy world I can make it however I like if I can somewhat explain it then I'm good I think <laughs> but yeah this longhouse it was surprisingly easy or surprisingly fast that it came together and then I struggled with a window for a bit not for too long but just for a I actually don't know what I wanted with the window. I knew like, oh, it, for Hala it's like very up north, so you don't want huge windows. Like, a building from Kanabashar would not stand in Valhalla, unless it was like somewhat remodeled to fit Valhalla's climate, because Valhalla is, uh, just think of like upper Norway. Of course, there's some fancy bits, because there's a lot more, I think, agricultural things in Valhalla than should be possible in that climate but again fantasy world you can do whatever you want with it as long as you have somewhat of a proper explanation you can you know you can go crazy and halfway through this section this is how my brain works I wanted to start building a casino well actually I've wanted to build a casino in Ken Al Bashar ever since I switched to the new style of buildings for Kanabashar. But uh, yeah, I was just constantly thinking of a casino. I mean, it kind of fits with Kanabashar to have like a lot of like casinos or just gambling dens and such. Kind of fits. Valhalla probably not so much. Like Valhalla is just like trying to survive. Like Valhalla is kind of like the edge of civilization in this part of my fantasy world which i really need to have a name for by this point but i don't because i get way too carried off with other things like griffkins non-store spiders lady artemisia because i've yes made a character or at least a person she's like the first person that i've somewhat laid out like Alright, these are her characteristics, and this is how she looks, and this is how she, you know, behaves and everything. But, um, yeah, so after I finished the longhouse, I just built the surrounding. Like, building the scenery or the foliage and the plants, making it into a bit of a farm. Because it's not really in the forest, so it can't be like a hunting lodge, otherwise... Well, the hunters would need to travel a bit until they get into the forest. Unless they're hunting polar bears, which I don't think, because... Uh, I mean, I saw some videos where it's said that some Norsemen actually had polar bears at, as pets. Which is just badass in its own right, but also just like really adorable, because you would have to get a polar bear at when they are a cub. Which, like, don't get a polar bear as a pet. But I'm now just having the visual of a baby polar bear and then just having that on your lap. Kind of like a cat. Yeah. I think I've never really grown out of the period of, in my life where I wanted every animal that could kill me as a pet. Like, I saw Narnia and I wanted a lion. 
I saw Game of Thrones and I wanted a huge ass wolf. What other animals did I want? Probably a lot. I mean, also from Narnia, I wanted a freaking centaur, or I basically wanted to somewhat be a centaur, just because I want that, and you can't really know what goes on in my brain, and especially at the age that I first saw Narnia, it was just like, I. No. My brain is just chaos, but Child Poison Blade is e or was even more chaos and was dangerous basically I think the amount of chaos because I am the person that w will just walk somewhere or anything and I will get lost in thought and then it's just where the fuck does my brain go because I have no idea also the fun thing is so I've mentioned this in videos and streams before but I have a morning job as delivering newspapers first to bring in some like side cash but um, yeah I found find myself actually quite often sort of rehearsing what I'm saying in voiceovers which is awkward when somebody which is very rare if I meet someone during or basically come across someone at like well it's like 6 a.m. in the morning but it's kind of awkward because I don't notice that I start talking out loud. So I'm basically doing my voiceover while cycling, delivering newspapers, and somewhat talking out loud what I'm sort of going to say in voiceovers. And then I really quickly shut up when I see that somebody is there. And then it's like I don't talk, I'm not screaming or anything. But I'm just, I think, like, on the edge of it being able to be, like, heard and, you know, properly heard. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of awkward, but, I mean, I don't think anyone would think I don't do that. I mean, here's the fun thing about YouTube. You kind of really quickly lose all sense of shame because, like, I think all of the weird things that I have done are now on the internet because I can't shut up. <laughs> so, yeah, now you know that I sort of rehearse my voiceovers when I am delivering newspapers and it's very awkward when I run into someone then because, uh, yeah. But still, like, even with that, I still have no idea where a voiceover goes when I start recording because when I am, well basically morning poison blade is dangerous because I'm not a morning person so, and I mean dangerous and as in actually dangerous because I'm very grumpy and don't want to talk to anyone so I'm like, in the morning I'm in a completely different mindset than I am when I'm actually doing the voiceover which is like, I don't know, 3 p.m. somewhat around that po point of time. But uh, yeah. Anyway, that's going to be it for today's video. I've lost all sense of shame, but I've done that a long time ago, so you guys know now all the weird quirks about me. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, there is a like and subscribe button, and there is a notification button that should notify you whenever a video goes on. But before that starts working, I will regather my sense of shame. So, but anyway, I wish all of you guys a wonderful day. Bye bye.